Hello everyone and welcome back to another painting tutorial video. In this video I'm going to show you how to paint crypt flares. Here is the list of colors which I will use for these miniatures. I will leave down in the description below too. I am using Gorthor Brown as a base color for the miniatures and I have them assembled except the lesser ones their arm posture will be blocking some of the areas during the painting progress so I leave them separate the first color I'm going to use is iron rack skin and first with a small dry brush I start applying it onto their face the head the chest the inner thighs the bone color area also the back and on the shoulders and upper arm parts Then I switch on to a medium layer brush and apply the color onto the areas where the dry brush couldn't fit into the recesses such as the center part of the chest, the face, on their back, the torn skin, the collarbone. And on the shoulders, the top raised muscles just to match with the torso. Now I'm going to use a Thonian Kama Shade Wash and I apply it onto the whole surface of the miniature except the wing membranes and the fingers. Once the wash is completely dry, I am using Deep Kim Flash and start layering and highlighting the areas where I painted the models with Iron Rack Skin. I am taking my time and adding an edge highlight on the areas where the Iron Rack Skin is just a little bit visible, for example, their rib areas. and just a very little amount onto the shoulders. After that, I am going to use Reichland Flash Shade Wash and I apply it onto the skin, except the wings. I apply a single coat and also trying to make it thin. I still want the previous colors to be seen on the miniatures.
Once the wash is completely dry, I am going back to use Iron Rack Skin. I use a small layer brush and I am trying to make thin lines as muscles on the body where it has been painted with the Iron Rack Skin. And also start edge highlighting the sharpest features on the skin. I do the same thing on the shoulders too. And finishing the bright part of the skin with deep kim flesh, I do a fine highlight on the sharpest features of the skin, mainly the faces. Now I can focus on the darker areas of the skin and for this I'm going to use Noon Oil Wash. I apply a first layer with a small dry brush by dabbing it onto the lower section of the legs, a little bit onto the sides. On the wings I start adding the wash on their lower arms and also around three quarters of the wing membranes by doing the same technique as with their legs, dabbing the wash onto the area. I add a second wash on the areas but on the wings I try to add less towards the transition. I am doing this technique to get an uneven more natural look of how the membranes are stretched out towards their ends, how the flesh stretches out making it more brighter. Once the wash is dry, I use Rhinox Hide and start base painting the fur, the goatee beard, the claws and the fingertips that are on the wings. I am trying to be as neat as possible, especially with their fingers, even though it is hard not to go over towards the membranes. Now I'm going to use again Nolan Oil Wash and I start applying it onto the areas which I painted with Rhinox Hide.
Now on the wings, this wash is very helpful, especially where I have gone a little bit over to the wings with the Rhinox hide. It luckily blends the parts quite nicely. Now I'm going back to use Gorthor Brown and with a small dry brush I start dry brushing all the darker skin areas on the models. I leave the fur dark. I also go with a very gentle movement on the edge of the brighter areas and this way I will get a smooth transition and blend the two part nicely. As for the wings on the membranes, I start dry brushing a little bit over to the halfway and towards the arms, I fade the color out more. But I am trying to keep the fingers still dark and if you make any mistakes around the fingers, you can correct them by using a small amount of Gorfo Brown on those areas. But in general, the dry brush will cover those parts. Now I'm going to use KDM Flash Tone and again I use a small dry brush and start dry brushing the upper thighs, the side ribs, around the neck and the shoulders. In this way I have the smoothest transition for the skin. As for the wings, I dry brush it just a little bit over halfway, fanning it out towards the arms. Then I switch onto a small layer brush and start base painting the inner part of the ears, the inside of the mouth, all the scars on the models and I do an edge highlight on the membranes of the torn parts of the skin and holes. I also make some very thin lines on the membranes just to pop out a bit more the rigid of the wings. Now I'm going to use Kerber Crimson Wash and start to apply it onto the ears, the mouths. I add on their eye sockets, on the scars, and also I apply it onto the open backs where the muscles are visible with the spine. Once it's dry, I use Kisla Flash and with a small layer brush, I start edge highlighting the ears, the lower eye bags and the scars.
Now I'm going to focus on the bones. For this I use Zandri Dust as a base color. And start base painting all the bones, such as the spikes, the bone spines. But I leave the rotting corpse, which is pinned through the bone spike. Some of the bones are coming through the muscles or flesh, which are painted already and washed with Kerberg Crimson. Just before it meets, I try to leave that gap to give the flesh still good look onto it. Afterwards, I will blend the two parts together. I am now using Agrex Earthshade. I start applying it onto the Zendry Dust painted areas. And for my alpha, I add the first wash and leave it aside. And I will be focusing on my lesser two flares. Once it's dry, I use Morgas bone and I start dry brushing the bones. Then I switch onto a small layer brush and start layering in order to get a nice smooth transition. Now I am using Screaming Skull and I start edge highlighting the bones. I also base paint their teeth. Now that I'm happy with the bones, I am using Caraber Crimson Wash and start adding it in the recesses and in some random areas and also an extra layer onto the 
muscle or flesh parts. Now I am going to focus on the Alpha's bone spikes and I am using again Agrax Earthshade. I apply a second wash but more closer towards the tips. Once it's dry, I add a third wash, but just on the tips to get a nice blend on those spikes. I am using Rhinox Hide on the tip of each spike so in this way I have the smooth transition now I am going to use Morgus Bone and start making thin lines close towards the bottom as the lower area the bones are still clean and also start layering the skulls on the spikes And now I'm going to use Screaming Skull and again I start base painting the teeth and also I do an edge highlight onto the skulls. Now I'm going to use Kislev Flash and I decided to give an edge highlight onto the each wings as well just to make it pop a little bit more. And with Abaddon Black, with my old brush, I start dry brushing the spikes, the tip of the furs and the claws to have them really dark. Now I'm going back to use Cadium Flash Tone and I start base painting the boxes that can be found on the models.
then I'm going to use Reichland Flash Shade and I start adding it onto the boxes. Once it's dry, I use Ushapti Bone and with a small layer brush, I just put a dot on each of the boxes. And finishing it with Nurgle's Rot, with a small layer brush I apply it onto the boxes. I want my flares to match with our lovely Crypt Ghouls, so they are having the same disease. Now I'm going to focus on the Rotten Corpse and for this I'm using Ironrack Skin. So the Rotten Flesh is... I base painted it with Gorefur Brown, same as the model. And with a small dry brush I start dry brushing the corpse. Then I switch onto a small layer brush and start applying again into some of the areas such as the head or the chest to have a nice smooth transition of it. After that, I apply a Thonian Kama Shade wash onto the rotten corpse. Now I'm going to add Kerberg Crimson Wash and I apply it onto the flesh areas where the muscles can be visible or the flesh has been torn off from the bone and around the spike. Once it's dry, I use Dipkin Flash and start layering and highlighting the sharpest features of the corpse.
Now I'm going to use Ushapti Bone and with a small layer brush first I start base painting the teeth and around the cheekbone I start also apply a small layer of this color just to show the bone area as well Now I'm going to use Palette Witch Flash and I start base painting the only eye that it has and also I give a fine highlight onto the skin just only onto the sharpest features. Now I'm going to use Fenrisian Grey and I apply a small dot onto the center of the eye as an iris. Now I'm going to use a bed and black. I decided to go as the same style and scheme for my Crypt Ghouls, so I use this color as a base color for their eyes. And I seal the eyes with some art coat just to have it nice shiny eyes. Now comes my favorite part, is using Blood for the Blood God. I use first a small layer brush and I start to make very thin lines between the teeth and also to the lower uh, lip of the mouth, some random flows that it flows down from their mouth. I also apply it onto the rotting corpse in some general areas also around the spikes inside the bottom area of the spikes and trying to make some thin lines of flowing down from the body itself then I use a small dry brush and I remove most of the paint from my dry brush and start dabbing it around their feet I am trying to apply it more randomly so for some of them I give less uh, into some of the parts I give a little bit more onto their feet where I make a mistake I just simply remove it with my finger and also each individual I try to give their unique way of expression with the blood such as for instance here like it can even flow down from its shoulder the blood and also the ripped flesh I cover it so it really gives that fresh look to it.
now the only thing left is to base the miniatures. I decided to go for the same theme as my creep ghouls. And here are my crypt flayers, finished and ready for hunt. I hope you find this video useful or helpful. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up to reach out more hobby painters and hit the bell button if you want to be notified about future video tutorial contents. If you want, you can also share it with your friends. Thank you so much for my patrons who are helping out this channel by supporting it. Thank you so much for watching. See you all in the next one. Cheers.